Hi everyone, my name is Ken and I'm with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars. And in this video we're going to be talking about the Sirius mount and the Atlas mount, two of our larger equatorial, or larger go-to equatorial mounts. They're both designed for carrying heavy equipment and also for doing any kind of astrophotography you can want, be it lunar, planetary, uh, also deep sky, nebula, and galaxy uh, uh, photographs. They both have about 42,000 objects in the database. They both have the same tracking and go-to accuracies. But there's some minor differences that might help you make up your mind between which to, to choose. The Sirius mount holds comfortably about 30 pounds of telescope. The Atlas holds 40 pounds. So that may not sound like a huge difference, but by the time you start adding on your cameras, your guide scopes, the camera for the guide scopes, all that extra stuff, uh, you might consider a little larger mount, uh, depending on the equipment you're going to be using. The other difference is in the physical size. The Atlas weighs about 20 pounds more than the Sirius does, so just think about how many times you're going to be lifting it out of your car to your observing site, or just transporting it from, the, from your room to the backyard, um, and that might help make up your mind. I want to do a small demonstration of the actual go-to, so we'll use the Atlas here, and I'll run you through how the system actually works. So here we have the Atlas mount. It's ready to go to observe or to photograph for the night. The first thing you want to make sure you do is polar line the mount. It's got to be pointing at Polaris for the motors to track accurately. You need some sort of power source for it. Here I've got battery power, the uh, Dynamo Pro uh, battery. We have AC adapters if you are in the backyard and you've got access to a wall outlet. Uh, but if you're in the woods away from any kind of power source, so maybe away from your car, a, uh, a good rechargeable battery is something nice to have. So in terms of hookups, the battery is plugged into the DC-12 port. The hand controller is plugged into the, obviously, the hand controller port. You've got your on-off switch here, and that's about it for setup. All right, so next we're going to go through the alignment procedure. Um, turn the mount on, the hand controller becomes active, and just follow the on-screen display. The first thing it warns you is not to look at the sun without a proper solar filter. Uh, once you've gotten past that warning, you enter your location, and this is going to be your longitude and latitude. The date, it's going to know uh, what date and the exact time as well. So it doesn't have to be exact atomic time, just within a minute or two is, uh, is, uh, is accurate enough. So once you've gotten past that, daylight savings time, yes or no, it asks you if you'd like to begin the alignment procedure. So yes, I would. You've got three methods of aligning, one star, two star, and three star. If you just want to do a real quick jump to look at Jupiter that night, and your polar aligned, one star is accurate enough. But for the best tracking accuracy, the best go-to pointing accuracy, you'll want to do two or better yet, three star alignment. I'm going to use, I'm going to choose two star for this uh, demonstration just because it's a little quicker. So two star alignment, enter. Uh, then it asks you for a star, and it'll, it'll pick several stars that are going to be up for your time of night and your location. So I will pick Sirius as my first star. I hit enter. The telescope will go to where it thinks Sirius is. It will be pretty close depending on how accurately polar aligned you are, but it'll probably be a little bit out of the field of view of the scope, maybe closer to the field of view of your finder scope. Once it gets there, fine-tune the position with the arrow buttons and when you're done, hit enter, and it'll ask you for your second star. All right, so it's gotten to the first star. It's asking me to center it to make sure it's exactly aligned. So I'm just going to say, all right, here we are, aligned. So now it's asking me for my second star. And for that, I think I will choose Regulus. It's a good second star across the field of view, uh, across the sky. The farther apart they are in the sky, the more accurate the alignment will be. So here's Regulus. I will go to that. All right, it's found Regulus. Again, center it up with the arrow keys, maybe using your finder or a low-power eyepiece. 
Uh, once you've centered it, hit enter, and it says alignment successful, you're ready to go. So the next thing you can do is pick the objects in the database that you want to see. There's the Meze objects, a list of 109, 110 of the best Deep Sky objects, the NGCs, several thousand fainter objects, the ICs, the planets here, um, it'll just pick planets that are up above the horizon, so uh, you'll know which ones are best to look at. If you don't know what you want to look at, there's a tour function here. It will suggest several different objects depending on the time of night and the, uh, and the season that you're in. So you can kind of get a feel for uh, what you want to see. So here we've got some of the suggested accessories for both mounts. The Dynamo Pro, a good rechargeable battery for when you're out in remote locations. The AC adapter when you're in the backyard and you've got access to a wall outlet. An 11 pound counterweight, if your scope's a little bit too heavy, you can add on one or more counterweights. The pier extension tubes, we've got a 16 inch for the Skyview Pro and the Sirius mount, and the eight inch extension tube there is for the Atlas mount. We've got a universal dovetail bar designed for mounting a variety of different optical tubes on top of your mount. And that last adapter is a wide Atlas mount. It's designed to use the wide format bars, like the Lozmandy bars, in case you've got a scope that uses a Lozmandy bar, now your Atlas can attach that uh, telescope to it. All right, so there we have it. This is the Sirius and the Atlas mount. Uh, just keep in mind a few small considerations when you're deciding which one to buy. Mostly how much weight you want to carry on with you and how big of a scope you think you're going to be getting to put on top of it. If you're set with your telescope, you don't think you're ever going to be upgrading in the future and it's below that 30 pound limit, then the Sirius is a great choice. But if you think at some point you might upgrade and get a larger scope, then the Atlas is probably the way to do it. But either way, you've got a very good equatorial mount for visual, for astrophotography, for pretty much everything you can do in astronomy. So, thank you very much. Clear skies.